In an affluent part of one of the world's richest cities, a sense of how even before this new world, the wealth was shared so badly. All of this has been donated by people whose children no longer need it, for those so poor they can't afford it themselves. Before the virus, expectant or new mothers from the poorest demographic would come here to be told that things would be OK. But now they can't, and the worry is that if they're at home, they're stranded. Families were already struggling with a broken system before this all started. And what we're seeing now is families struggling to get hold of the stuff that they need, struggling with incomes that are falling when they don't have a safety they don't have a safety net, they don't have savings, but also just the, the social and emotional impact of being um, at home, um, often with small children, often in quite cramped spaces. The human cost of all those closed shops is just becoming understood. Many businesses can and have now applied for the government to pay their staff, but just as happened in Spain and Italy a few weeks ago, well over a million people have suddenly now applied for government benefits in one of the world's most expensive cities. You could be from any social demographic with a baby due about now and be in a load of trouble. It's already the case that nearly a third of children in the UK live in some form of poverty and the expectation is that perhaps a fifth of all adults in this country will be forced to claim benefits through losing their jobs because of the virus. That in turn means that even in traditionally middle class areas like this, people are facing the prospects of bringing their children up on benefits. Vicky used to receive support from the Little Village charity when she was expecting. Now she has to get by on benefits. She lives in a single room in a house with her daughter, who's now two and a half. The virus means they're stuck in here together for most of the day. It's tough, it's expensive and it's endless. You know, other things go up. Not just your rent, but your phone bill, cost of deliveries for packages that you need because it's not always essentials you need, you need other things to keep your kids busy as well. The UK government programme known as Universal Credit was already controversial as the money takes weeks to arrive and forces people to choose between things like rent and food. Some big players in the charity world are now demanding the authorities go further to protect those most at risk. They've got lots of extra costs with food, with extra energy, um, particularly with internet, um, to be able to support their children's learning at home. Um, and they just need that bit of extra support um, to be able to cover those costs and to be able to make ends meet. The Little Village charity now describes itself as virtual, changing its model to deliver goods to the most desperate rather than hosting them. But they admit they're having to push hard to meet the fast-growing demand. The realisation is dawning that just as those born after the banking collapse more than a decade ago grew up in austerity, so those born now are going to be raised by parents with no idea when their work might come back and potentially with years of hardship to follow. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera, in London.